بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد لا تقوم الساعة حتى تأخذ أمتي بأخذ القرون قبلها قيامة والنات كام أنت الماء أمة والأميولات والفولو والقبي the way the life of the people of the past لا تركبون سنة من كان قبلكم هذه روايات لا تتبعون سنن من كان قبلكم حتى لو دخلوا جحر ضب سم روايات خريب أنت يوال إمبرسنيت يوال إمتيت يوال سيموليت يوال لايف exactly like how the people of the past lives were the first aspect was the lizard in entering the hole so one possible meaning in connection to the lizards was that the shayateen the jinnat are regarded as reptiles their connection with the human beings and all these people that are connected to the new world order those people, people that are connected to Dajjal, the Imam of the reptiles, they are regarded as reptilians. And that's why we see reptilian symbols from the time of the pyramids and in history. And that is connected to the Shayateen and the Jinnat. Likewise, these hybrids or people that are in masks, outwardly they have a form of human beings but inwardly they are connected to the reptiles just by the way with regards to even technology and connected to Dajjal and the science of Dajjal if we look at the new Internet Explorer logo then it's close to the Google Chrome logo the Google Chrome logo has a one eye and three sixes around it the Google Chrome new logo also as if there is a one eye in the center and it will form three sixes as well. And just to understand this reptilian connection, and I'm not going to go into detail, but just briefly because the rewrite is long and there's other aspects we need to cover. The one girl who was uh, connected to the show, she explains her experience and she says that they were with reptilians and other alien life forms and she calls them greys and she says she was tortured physically and emotionally and she tried to fight back but they manipulate her muscles and they left scars and she says at night I would wake up with a energy body laying beside me a reptilian being on a bed two of them mentally holding me down I tried to escape, but I could not. And uh, so there was a physical and a metaphysical connection. And these are the reptilians or the shayateen get through to a person. And she says they are through a dream state where they pose as romantic partners or through drugs or through alcohol abuse which lowers the body energy vibration and allows access. Likewise, through excessive listening of music, it lowers your energy levels of your body and allows them access. That's why we are told to read excessively Quran in the house of Surah Baqarah is recited. The shayateen cannot enter because that increases the wavelength which blocks Jinnat, Jadu, Sihar, all these evil forms to come. And she says that uh, these manifestations would come in different forms and uh, the end goal would be to control your physical body for their own use. And uh, the, the ultimate goal is now, and given different experiences, they say that the episodes where a person has lost time when driving, when their nose bleeds, when they have bruises on their body, when they go into a loneliness state, when they want to see people, when they have sleep paralysis or sleep problems. So people experience all of this here and they're saying that the abductions 
And that would be probably prevalent in the movies, in the film industry, in Hollywood, etc. Where they would show this reptilian beings, these lizards, these reptiles. Outwardly it's showing they are aliens, but actually they are not aliens. They are actually the genants that want to control us human beings and take over the world of the humans. And that goes back again in time to the time of Suleiman which was discussed previously. Just to understand this point, and I'm just going to give you one example. In Aligarh, an Aligarh Muslim University, which was initiated to create scholars of Islam, but how Satanism has infiltrated there, and one boy gives a report where he just went to these people just to see what their cult was. And uh, he says that what they used to do is they should dig out corpses from cemeteries, give each other skulls as birthday presents, drink blood out of these skulls. They would break into churches, desecrate Bibles, desecrate the Quran. They would invert the cross. They would have scars on their bodies using knives where there was an inverted cross, triple six triangles. And just in that area in India, they say they had 13,000 followers. And the habit was they used to download the books of Alistair Crowley, which we discussed previously, was one of the Imams of the Satanic cult. They used to paint their rooms black, the walls black, stick half burned paper pages of the Bible, they would have bones, skulls, inverted crosses, and they were preparing for this, which they would call necronemesis or beam that was going to come, besides Iblis. And amongst the books they used to study was the Satanic Bible and other Satanic books. So this boy that went for that just to see what it is all about, he narrates, he says that we went to the procession, they did some designs on the ground, and then they started the routine. And they just say, hey Lord Lucifer, hey Lord Iblis, different incantations, and they had bells, and they had chanting, and then they had to cut some blood off their body, and as it blood dropped onto the ground, they would say, oh Lord Lucifer, please accept our sacrifice. So this was connected to the satanic worship and the new world order and satanism which has become common and my ummah will also follow them in that. That was the one possible meaning. Secondly, you will imitate them in their actions, means everything. And we need to cry tears of blood and see how hard the hearts have become. That the family structure in the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have been sent for the Hidayat of mankind to take every person out of the darkness of Batil and take them to the light of Islam in Akhirat, to take every person from the Amal of Jahannam and into Jannat. Our hearts have become so dark, we have fallen the ways of Batil so much that in our own houses, our wives, our children, Everybody is in a direction. Real Islam is there's a fire. People are running to the fire. There's only one solution. There's only one option is to follow my sunnah. If you follow my sunnah, you will be saved. But in every aspect, when it's our dressing, whether it's our outward appearance, whether it is women beautifying their bodies with nail polish, which does not validate their salat, fake eyelashes, whether it is them dressing up and putting on perfume immorally. Nabi Alayhi Salaam said that woman leaves a house like a prostitute who puts perfume on to make other men entice her. And our outward appearance, then our houses, then our eating habits, where we are told to sit on the ground, remove our shoes and be humble. Whether we follow their eating habits, we sitting on our tables and chairs, and we have instruments to eat, whether we have had dedicated rooms for cinemas and TV, viewing of Dajjal, whether it's our weddings, which are very extravagant, where music is blaring in the background, where wastage and israf is common, 
And when Nabi alayhi salam is saying the best nikah and the most barakah is that the least burden, the least spending, where there is no difficulty. Today, a person takes out so much debt, his whole life he's paying for that wedding, he's still paying, but they are divorced already. Whether it is in our celebrations, that the days of celebration is a day of Eid, where we sacrifice Ramadan for Allah, now we can cel celebrate. Where we sacrificing like Ibrahim salam sacrifice, then we can celebrate. Otherwise, birthday parties are not a celebration for a believer. Valentines are not a celebration. Anniversaries are not a celebration. Where we have bachelor parties and Mandy nights and baby showers, imitating the people of Batil exactly. Like how animals are in the zoo, specific dates of the year, we go to a specific lake and we parade. When it's our holidays and we are going to places of vacation to, to break the command of Allah. And these are small things. The other part of Nabi is mentioned, in kana minhum manata ummahu alaniya. If somebody has to commit incest, what his own mother openly and he will propagate it. That day my ummah will see it and we are getting cases. Again, this is not the platform to mention it. But we've got cases where father-in-law is touching his daughter-in-law at last. His wife becomes haram. The son is not at home. The wife becomes haram. One guna. Secondly, his wife has become haram on him. They are still staying together in zina. We are brothers, we had a case where the girl complained to parents, they never believed her. Brothers were sexually abusing their own sister. The children, the situation is so serious. Muslim girls who are habitual of taking drugs and intoxicants do not have money to support their habit, so they are selling their bodies to raise funds. The situation is not code red, the situation is not state of emergency, the situation is more volatile than that. We need to take lesson, we need to change, we need to realize that Akhirat is not something small and insignificant. Hisab Kitab is not small. I'm going to face my Allah. I'm going to account to my Allah. I am responsible. Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'oolun an ra'iyatihi. Each of you are shepherds and you will be answerable for your flock. Every man, every mother, Every person is accountable. We will get double guna. We need to realize that the time has come now. Alam ya'ni lil ladheena amanu an takhsha'a qulubuhum li dhikrillah. My Allah has commanded me. The command of Allah is more important than anything else on earth. Everything can break. Everything can be destroyed, but the Amr of Allah can never be destroyed. The third meaning, like how time, and we explained previously, 1,500 years of the Bani Israel, thus Ummat 1,500 years or 1,600 years. The other fourth meaning is where this Ummat, and we will briefly just go through a summary. If Allah gives us tawfiq, we will go into detail. Like how Musa salam went to the, was delivered by Allah in the house of Batil Fir'aun. Musa salam grew up in that house. Nabi salam grew up in the house of Batil where the Baytullah had idols in the Mushrikeen. The climax of idol worship was in Mecca, Mukarrama. Then Musa salam left that place for approximately 10 years. Nabi alayhi salam made hijrat as well for approximately 10 years. Then Musa alayhi salam returned and he wiped out those idols and that Batil and that Firaun 
Nabi alayhi salam also returned and wiped out that batil and those idols that were in Makkah and how Nabi alayhi salam was given conquest. Musa alayhi salam conquered Firaun and he was drowned. Then Musa alayhi salam went to Allah like that Nabi alayhi salam returned to Allah. This ummah was left alone and like how Musa alayhi salam made intercession for a Nabi to assist him in this ummah as well there's not one person left with this responsibility of Nubu'ah but on the barakat of Nabi alayhi salatu wassalam each one of us like Harun alayhi salam was given this responsibility of Nubu'ah this Ummah has also been given the responsibility of Nubu'ah and like how they both did this effort a time will come where Musa salam left Nabi salam left Harun was in charge of the Ummah and then Samiri came we will go into detail inshallah of how Samiri came and this Ummah a Dajjal will come and how Samiri used the situation to manipulate the Bani Israel that only in a span of 40 days they turned to Kufr and idol worship. The last part of this Ummah also there will be a climax of Kufr and idol worship and then Musa salam returned the Naib of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be Isa salam and he will return and that same Samiri Isa alayhi salam will destroy Samiri may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the reality of the shortness of this life and may Allah give us the reality of preparation for Akhirah man qara'a surah yaseen fi sadrin nahar qudiyat hawaijuhu whoever reads surah yaseen in the beginning of the day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill his needs. So we should make it a habit morning and evening to recite Surah Yasin. He said it was Surah Yasin and Taha 1000 years before Allah created the heaven and earth. And on hearing this, the angel said, Blessing to the Ummah on whom the Quran will be revealed and sent down. Blessing are the hearts that will bear and memorize this Quran. And blessing are those tongues that will recite the surahs. Whoever reads Surah Yasin, it is said that it is a one which is Rafia and Khafida, where it will exalt and honor the believers and degrade the disbelievers. It is named in the Torah as Mun'ima, the giver of good things, because it contains benefits for the benefit of this life and in the year after, it removes afflictions in this world and in the year after. Nabi Ali Islam's desire was that Surah Yasin should be in the heart of every Ummati. Anybody who recites Surah Yasin every night and then dies, he will die a Shaheed. Whoever reads Surah Yasin, he will be forgiven. His hunger will be removed, he will be satisfied. If a person loses their way, he will find their way. If he loses his animal, conveyance, something, read Surah Yasin, you will find it. If the shortage of food, read it, Allah will put barakah. If a person reads it at a person at the throes of death, it will be made easy for him. If a person reads it on a woman who is experiencing difficulty on childbirth, delivery will become easy. There are many benefits of reading Surah Yasin. The least we should do is make it our daily habit, never ever to miss it. Reading it morning and evening.